Thank you for watching the Frankie and Rose Show. I am your host, Rochelle. Now joining me tonight is a very familiar face. Roland S. Martin is the host and managing editor of Washington Watch with Roland Martin, TV One's hour-long weekly public affairs series, which focuses on issues of importance to African Americans through interviews with officials from the administration, Congress, and other policymakers who represent black communities. Martin is also a CNN contributor and senior analyst for the Tom Joyner Morning Show. Roland Martin has just been named the National Association of Black Journalists of the Year, and he stopped by to talk about this great achievement and other great things he has coming for 2013. Hi, Roland. How are you? Doing great. Glad to be here. Roland, let me first congratulate you on being named the NABJ 2013 Journalist of the Year. How does that feel? Well, uh, I was uh, shocked and surprised when I got the phone call uh, telling me that I won the award. It was not something that was even on my radar, wasn't thinking about it, uh, and was, again, was very surprised when uh, President Greg Lee called me. Uh, I'm certainly humbled and uh, excited by, that, uh, by it. You know, I'm a 24th member of NABJ. I joined in 1989, and so uh, I have uh, served on the board on two occasions, and I have always been committed. Uh, to this organization, and so for them uh, to honor me uh, in this way really um, was a surprise, and I'm certainly thankful uh, for the honor. There are many journalists in the world, but talk to us about some of the hard work that goes on behind the scenes. Many people think it's just standing in front of a camera talking, but talk to us about doing extensive research and providing quality programs that are informative to viewers. Well, I think, first of all, um, the people have to understand that um, there, are, there are people, I think a lot of people, first of all, get confused. Uh, they get confused by uh, who they see and they say, well, that person is a journalist. Well, a lot of people you see on television commenting on stories, uh, you know, they fall in the pundit category. So they might, they might have worked on a campaign, they might have been involved in politics, something along those lines. But a lot of them are not necessarily journalist. And so, look, I've been at this game since I was 14 years old. I went to uh, a, um, I went to a communication high school. And so this is what uh, I went to high school for, what I went to college for, what I actually uh, graduated in. And so, yes, there's a significant amount of time that you're able to put in uh, when it comes to researching things, when it comes to uh, trying to uh, get people to learn the reading, and, and but more important is also the relationships, because you've got to be able to have those. So when something happens, the ability to pick up the phone and be able to call somebody, uh, and, and be and, and able to uh, talk about the issues of the day, uh, and, and have the kind of a uh, credible contact. So when something jumps off, uh, you know who to call, and you know to get the right information from. Uh, and so all of that goes into it, uh, and so it's not as simple. Uh, and, and in fact, I had a, a, a friend of mine who is who is not a journalist, but uh, who all of a sudden began to do some television commentary. And the brother said, "Man, he said, he said, man, I, I got to give it up to y'all. Uh, this, this, this ain't as simple as, as it seems." He said, "You know, you can't just sit on your couch at home and say, oh, man, I can go do that.'" He said, "No, it's a lot more goes into it than that." And I said, yes, that's exactly the case. Now, there is this huge buzz going around regarding the Bible series, which has aired on the History Channel. Now, it seems to have shed a new light on some unbelievers and a newfound respect from Hollywood. Now, why do you think that is, Roland? Uh, well, the thing is, this always happens. It always happens when something does well uh, that's related to, uh, to, to uh, religious folks, and then people go, oh, my God. Uh, Hollywood goes, oh my goodness, what is it? It's called great storytelling. I, I don't care what it is. You show me something that has bad storytelling, I will show you something nobody wants to watch. Right. And so that, that's critical. But, you, but you've, always had, uh, you've always had the great storytelling. You've always had, uh, uh, you look at, well, you know, what's the most popular book bought every year? The Bible. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at, uh, look at um, uh, Mel Gibson's movie uh, dealing with Jesus Christ. I mean, how much money does that make? Right. Unbelievable amount of money. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, this thing sort of happens 
all the time. It happens all the time. And I just, I just laugh uh, when, when Hollywood goes, oh, oh my God, what, you know, what happened? What, what's going on? I can't believe this, this existed. You just sit there and just shake your head and say, okay, here we go. Uh, with more of this particular nonsense. And that, that's what it is. I mean, bottom line is, you are, you are always going uh, to have um, a religious theme. Maybe it's because you've got a lot of people in this country who are people of faith, who, who, who believe. And there are people out there who are not believers, uh, but who want to learn more about it. And so that's why I, I didn't get a kick the entire time I did. Now, speaking of the Bible, TV One just announced a new primetime special entitled Amazing Grace, Drama in the Black Church, which will focus on the battle of leadership and spiritual leaders who are involved in scandals. Tell us more about this primetime special. Well, on, on Saturday, we are airing, uh, we're doing the world premiere of uh, Russ Parr's movie, The Under Shepherd, uh, and that deals with uh, a lot of drama. Uh, uh, you tell this fictional story of a lot of drama in the church, uh, and it's a phenomenal movie. Uh, and so we wanted to create this companion piece that goes along with it to to look at uh, real life drama, but not just uh, telling you know sordid tales, but also uh, showing people how they overcame, how they got through, how they were able. Uh, to, to, to move beyond the drama in the church. And so we talked, we were profiling uh, Jericho City of Praise uh, with uh, the crisis in that church where you saw the founding uh, pastor uh, die. And then his wife, who was an apostle, she passed away. And all of a sudden, uh, they've been involved in court battles ever since the son uh, got booted out of the church from leading the church although he was on staff there for 20 years. And so I said that, and, and, and then we talked to Pastor Jamal Bryant of Baltimore. He talked about uh, how his marriage ended and how his, he thought his ministry was going to end uh, when he had an affair uh, and how he had to fight through that and overcome that and, 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 and deal with that. So we dealt with that. We also talked to the pastor Ralph Douglas that. And we said he was, he was somebody who was a young pastor. Uh, who was in the church and who was uh, involved and, and who was uh, going places. And all of a sudden, here he is, his wife is, goes into labor. And then uh, they get to the hospital and the insurance has been cut off. Uh, and, and, and so he's questioning whether or not uh, he wants to continue in the ministry, uh, but he stays focused, stays with the word, uh, and then he ends up, uh, going on to found a major church in Houston that now has more than 20,000 members. And so it's really about, uh, you know, and, and also we talk about three other paths, and just how they deal with accountability, and how they deal with leadership, and how they deal with uh, church members and, and folks wanting uh, to do their own thing in the church. And so you want to be able to show uh, the difficulty, the things that people have had to contend with, we also wanted to show how he has all that ministry continue to grow and continue to build the church. Roland, before we go, let's talk about some of your personal projects. What can we expect from you in 2013? Uh, I'm very excited uh, about going to the next level, the ability to do some new things and some exciting things. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, and, and so uh, we're working on some other uh, things with TV One that I can't announce right now, but I, I can't wait when we do because it is certainly going to be uh, exciting. And so, you know, I, it's, I'm, I'm just all about being, you know, the, the slogan of Alpha by Alpha, I'm a life member, uh, is onward and upward. Uh, and that's what it's all about. And so it, it, it's all about, you know, continuing, continuing to build, uh, you know, vision and continuing to, uh, to grow. Now let the viewers know where they can keep up with you on Facebook, Twitter, and your website. I am more than comfortable uh, in knowing that God has something significant in store for me, and I find every book the same way. I continue to do God's will. And for me, that's how I operate, that's how I roll, and I will always uh, have that first and foremost uh, in terms of the things that I want to do.
Roland Martin, we'd like to thank you so much for joining us on the Frankie and Rose Show. Anytime you want to stop by, please feel free to do so. Yeah, that, that certainly got a like page, got a like page uh, on uh, Facebook. Just, just put in Roland S. Martin. Uh, my Twitter handle is Roland S. Martin. Uh, the website is RolandSMartin.com, so you can check it out as well. And so, uh, look, I can, if, if anybody tells you they can't reach me, they lie. <laughs> they straight up lying because uh, I, I'm one of the most accessible brothers uh, out here, so I can always be reached. Everybody, that was Roland S. Martin from TV One's Washington Watch. We have more with the Frankie and Rose Show. We ask you guys to stick around.